Alpha 21 has brought a lot of new mechanics to 7 days to die. So in this series I'll show you how to optimize your playthrough to maximize your profits. This is Aiming for Gaming, and today we're aiming for zombie slaying. And welcome to my brand new Alpha 21 world. Let's complete our initial quest as quickly as possible. First I need 10 plant fibers to craft a bedroll. I'll place it, pick it up, scrap it and move on. I can also free up some space by getting rid of unnecessary items like nodes, land claim blocks and torches. Next I need my first tool, a stone axe. The game gives me hints on where to find wood and stone. I gather wood from small branch-like plants and find stone lying on the ground. Alright, I have enough resources to craft the axe and some fiber pens using the fiber I got from scrapping the bedroll. In Alpha 21 the developers decided that all you need is pens. The rest of the clothes are not that important. With the axe I can gather wood and stone faster. Instead of chopping down trees I prefer to get wood from tree stumps. If I'm lucky I might find honey in a stump which can cure infections caused by zombie bites. Oh, what a luck, I found honey in the first stump. Let's celebrate this by crafting a wooden club. I am feeling a bit lazy, so I'll break one rock to get around 20 stones. That should be enough to craft several arrows and a spear. In this playthrough I'll be using spears and rifles, because they have received a significant buff and are definitely worth trying out. For arrows I should check the bird nests on the ground. They usually have feathers and sometimes even eggs, which can be a good source of food in the future. The white plants here are cotton, which is useful for crafting cloth. I can gather around 40 cotton in just one minute, eliminating the need to search for cloth. Next I'll craft a bow and some arrows. Oh, I actually need some feathers. Now let me craft some arrows and a building block. Now I should place a building block, drink some water and it to free up space and upgrade the block to wood using the right mouse button. It takes 3 swings with an axe, 2 with a claw hammer or 1 with a nail gun, which I can acquire later. The only thing left is a campfire, which I can place anywhere to complete the tutorial. Time to scrap the wooden club, craft my first spear and find more cotton to craft cloth. Meanwhile my wood reserves are running low, so let's gather more from this tree. Alright, around 150 wood should be enough for whatever the game throws at me in the first few days. Now I'll craft 20 frame shapes for future quests, 5 chests for my temporary base and some arrows. Another tree stump? Sure, why not? Let's test my luck for a second honey. Nope, that was impossible. Great, we've earned our first 4 skill points by completing the tutorial. Let's spend 2 points on perception and 2 points on spearmaster. You might ask why I'm not spending points on sexual tyrannosaurs. Well, in Alpha 21 the stamina consumption bonuses have been moved to the weapon or tool mastery skills. So I'll naturally gain stamina consumption bonuses by leveling up my spear mastery, which completely changes how I distribute my skill points. Another advantage of spears is their extended reach, making it easier to kill enemies like this chicken. In Alpha 21 animals guarantee 5 bones when killed, making it possible to craft a bone knife right away. Knives are more efficient at gathering meat from animals. By the way, spears are easier to use if you're good at aiming. In comparison, clubs have short reach but wide swings. So even if you miss, you still have a chance to hit your enemy. These medical cars often have one or two zombies sleeping nearby, so I should clear them out first. And my reward is… wow, painkillers and steroids. The car itself also has two more steroids and a medical kit. Jackpot. Traders houses have received a massive overhaul in Alpha 21. They will still kick you out at 9.50 pm, but at least they no longer teleport you if you approach their place at night. Let's make our temporary storage spot here, put all the materials I don't need in the chest and go visit Jen. It's almost 10 am, so we should hurry. Our plan is to finish all 5 quests today. Alpha 21 requires a lot of reading. Make sure you're prepared to read plenty of books. Luckily, each trader's zone has several crafting stations, so always check them. The kitchen area often contains some murky water and food. If you're playing in biomes other than the forest, you can find additional clothes as well. Coin purses are also great, as they often contain dukes and dollars, which can be sold for more dukes. Oh, and look, a pistol! Fantastic! As I mentioned earlier, crafting stations are a good source of the Forge Ahead journal, which is now necessary for progressing with crafting stations themselves. So if you want a forge, make sure to read enough journals to unlock it. 
Alright, we have 5 jobs of different types to finish, but before that, let's quickly check out what Jen offers us. 3 rifle wall journals are good, and glue, cement and 800 cobblestone rocks will come in handy. I'll buy all of that later, but for now, let's focus on getting the money from the quests. I'll empty my pockets and off to the rally point. Good news, the passing gas is a great location for a horde base, I'll take a note of that. This guy, however, might become an unwelcome guest, so let's get rid of him. With my level 1 spear and only 2 points invested in spear mastery, I'm a bit weak. Drinking water beyond fullness gives me a little extra stamina, which is helpful. By the way, this is a nomad difficulty, which means both the zombies and I deal the intended amount of damage without any handicaps. Finally, rest in peace. Or in pieces. One important mechanic in questing is that points of interest or POIs reset once you start a quest. This means you can clear a POI, start a quest and then clear it again. However, in practice, this doesn't make much sense unless you can quickly get loot worth the effort. In most cases, the loot in the early stages of the game is not that great, so save your time by focusing on quests instead. Luckily, I found some glue, which combined with cloth can be used to make duct tape. Duct tape is incredibly useful and can be used for crafting many cool things like padded armor in our case. Once I find 5 duct tape, I'll have a full set of padded armor that reduces the damage I take by 25%. This allows me to withstand more damage and survive longer, which is crucial in a zombie survival game. Anyway, let's kill the remaining zombies and complete this quest. Oh, look, a cooking pot! That's a lucky find, now I can boil water. Another zombie goes down, only two left. And they're hiding in a bunker just below. Hello there? Oh no, I broke my spear. Always remember to repair your weapons, or it could be a death sentence. Finally, I deserve some rewards from these chests. Let's take a look. Some food and beer, that's good. Of course, we should break these crates as well, they often contain valuable items like journals and books. The pipe pistol is useless to me, since I already found a normal pistol. And some ammo, which is always a good thing. The only thing left in this POI is this box, and I can access it by placing a frame shape. Two repair kits, nice. Time to return to that trader. I'll need a stone shovel today, so let's craft one. By the way, placing items on the hotbar doesn't count towards your capacity, so feel free to use it as extra storage to reduce the encumbered debuff. Meanwhile, I'll put all my excess materials back into storage. Remember the cooking pot I found? It's time to use it. I can use the right mouse button to place as much wood as I need to boil water from the murky water I found. And hello, Jen, I've completed the job, now give me my reward. Oh, I don't need any of these items at the moment, but 500 gunpowder is great. I can use it later to make pipe bobs or ammo. My next quest is a fetch quest. But before that, I would kindly ask you to leave a like on this video if you are enjoying it so far. This will help me a lot and motivate me to make more videos for you. Look at that! There's no one around this time. Ok, let's find the loot. And my loot is a plaster cast. That's incredible! Now if I break a leg, I can use it and save a lot of time on recovery. There is an important thing to know about tier 1 chest rewards. They're not that great. That's why the best strategy is to simply grab the quest item and return to the trader. Unfortunately, this time we weren't lucky, so we have to go inside and retrieve the supplies. Sorry lady, I'm not after you, so please take a quick nap. Another nice lady. I'd be really grateful if you could take a nap as well. There we go, we have the supplies, so there is no point in staying here. Home sweet home. Guess what's ready for picking? Hmm, I don't think I need another 500 gunpowder, so I can use these mechanical parts in the future crafting recipes. I mean, here's a pro tip. Don't underestimate the power of mailboxes. In the next episode, I'll show you how amazing they can be. What's in the car, by the way? Free glue. That means three more duct tape and three more armor pieces. Now I need one more to complete my armor set because this looks awkward. Ok, let me show you a good example of quest double dipping. Step 1. Get a book from the mailbox. Step 2. Start your quest. Step 3. Get another book from the mailbox. Profit. Look, someone even decided to greet me. 
This time the supplies are up ahead, and I don't want to spend time inside the house. That's why I brought frame shapes. All I need to do is jump and place them, then destroy one or two wooden blocks and voila! Now I can descend by collecting the blocks and return to the trader. Fast and efficient. I didn't even have to kill any zombies. This time I got 9mm ammo, so I can finally start using my pistol. The fourth quest is another clear quest, so we have to spend some time investigating the POI. At least I'll get some potatoes. And here's an example of how challenging it can be if you're not good at aiming. With a club I would've killed that vulture by now. Anyway, I need to eliminate the remaining zombies. By the way, these stacks are a great source of wood. For just 100 health points you can gather a decent amount of wood. Remember, this game is designed to surprise you. Almost all POIs have spots where zombies will jump on you from wardrobes, walls, roofs or anywhere else. So if you know where they are, you can crouch and perform a surprise attack. Or you can use brute force like me because I'm in a hurry. Oh, a Spear Hunter book. I need 7 different volumes of this book to get a neat full stamina regeneration from killing enemies with power attacks. The leg armor I found is better than mine, so I'll equip it as well. Cracker book contains sharp stick journals, which I'll be getting a lot now because the probability of finding a specific journal increases with the level of the corresponding skill. In my case, I've learned two levels of Spear Mastery, which increases the chances of finding books that further boost my spears. With every few levels of this journal, I'll learn a new level of the Stone Spear, then the Iron Spear and finally the Steel Spear. The final level is 75, so I'll need to find 75 sharp sticks journals to get a level 5 Steel Spear. You know what? I'll take this glue as my reward. My last quest is a buried supplies quest. In general, if it was an insane nightmare difficulty, I wouldn't recommend ever attempting it, especially at night. But on normal difficulty, I can take some risks and try. Just change the frame shape to a ladder and I can use it as a ladder, obviously. This quest is awful on insane nightmare difficulty because each time you destroy several tiles, the circle outlining the possible location of the treasure becomes smaller. But at the same time, several zombies might spawn nearby. If you're not prepared to fight them, you'll most likely die. Luckily, this time there were no zombies with a dink, so we're good. The trick to finding the treasure is to dig deep enough to reach the stone, and then dig horizontally to find the buried supplies. And now it's night time, which means feral zombies with the yellow eyes and increased health and damage may spawn. The speed of zombies is also increased until 4 am. So on the hardest difficulties I would suggest postponing clear quests and doing them last. Spend the night time inside a POI unless you really know what you're doing. There we go, a chest with food, murky water, a cooking journal and supplies. Be careful, because once you retrieve the supplies, a group of zombies will immediately spawn. Even on Nomad difficulty it's so dark that I didn't notice another zombie, which resulted in a serious injury. But I have enough healing items and a pistol, so I can regroup and take them down. The problem is that it's too dark to see them well, making it harder to deal with so many zombies even one by one. That was the last of them. I can still hear someone, but let's just run away for now. During the night you can often find deer, which are a great source of meat, bones and animal fat. However, be prepared for competition from zombies who also like to feast on the animals you've just killed. If you want to collect meat faster, aim your mouse just above the animal and then look down. This allows you to swing your knife swiftly and save some time. Another surprise for me is that I've sprained my arm. I have no other option but to use steroids. They'll allow me to ignore the sprain debuff for my legs and arms, but it will consume some water. During the night, if you're not facing super fast running zombies, it's okay to loot mailboxes. And even if you decide to search for some stuff at night, make sure you are prepared to fight ferals. They are really fast and serious. At least I've upgraded my spear mastery to level 3, now it will become easier to manage stamina. A cooking? Good. And a spear hunter, that's even better. Oh, and another one. Just think how fast it was. I've got 4 out of 7 books for my spear in less than one day. Let's craft a level 4 spear to celebrate that. And good morning everyone, we've survived our first night, which is great. Today we should finish tier 1 of the quests. Each tier requires 7 points multiplied by the tier number to be finished and each quest gives points equal to the tier itself. For tier 1 I need 7 points and for tier 2 I'll need 14 points. Each tier 1 quest gives me 1 point and each tier 2 quest gives me 2 points.
I'll try my luck on opening the police car with my only lockpick. Nope. Not today. But my reward is 10 duct tape, which is nice. However, the quests are so far away. Oh my. It would be faster to complete two more buried supplies quests instead. This time the loot is even better, but I don't want to fight zombies anymore, so bye bye. Surprisingly, all the rewards are good, but I'm more interested in the pie bombs. Alright, one more quest to go. Hey, what's that noise? Another zombie? That was unexpected. Where was I? Ah, the hole. The food in this pack isn't that good, but let's think about the future reward. You know what? I'll check this helmet light mod, I like it. And finally, it's not even midday on day 2, and we've already got a bicycle. There is also a quest to locate the new trader. I told you I'd buy cobblestone rocks and some journals, and now is the time. And that's it. At this point my life becomes much easier, because I'm more mobile. Moreover, the minibike has its own storage with 9 slots, which I'll definitely use. I don't want to stay in this small city, so I'll take the best loot I have and go find a new home. But that's a story for another time. I hope this episode helped you achieve what you were aiming for today. For more episodes, simply visit my channel and consider subscribing, it's that easy. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.